Hello everyone, I'm Jen and I make useful English Lit study videos on Shakespeare, poetry, fiction, literary ideas and more to help you become a literary expert. So if that sounds like what you want, then make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you never miss out on my future weekly videos. So in today's video, we are going to be exploring how to use AI tools to help us better understand the meter and rhythm of a poem. So I've previously done a video on this topic of scansion, which is the act of scanning a poem for its metrical arrangement and patterns. But over the years, I continue to find students struggle with this area of poetry studies. So I used to think that the only reason is because there are quite a few intimidating technical terms, which are hard to remember. Remember, such as trochee, spondees, and tetrameters or hexameters, whatever. But I recently gave this another thought, and I realized that another challenge might be that some students just find it really hard to discern rhythmic stresses in poetic language, especially if the student's native tongue isn't English. So on this topic of scansion in poetry, I think too often we let the jargon overshadow the main point of learning about meter and rhythm, which is less about the technicalities of counting how many syllables and stresses there are in each line, and much more about feeling the ebb and flow of a poem's language and phrasing. Think of scansion less as math, and more as music, because it's not really about counting, but rather feeling the beat. So most poems that do follow a fixed metrical form tend to feature the iambic pentameter, da 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 such as the sonnet, the blank verse, the villanelle, think Dylan Thomas's Do Not Go Gentle Into the Good Night, as an example. But poets often diverge from a strict adherence to this popular rhythmic scheme to create a different vibe, which is when we find things like forceful trochees, which is a stress on stress unit, or waltzy anapests, which is unstress unstress stress. Da -da 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 -da. We also know that poetic lines don't necessarily always stick to a five rhythmic unit formula, which is the penta and the pentameter. So depending on the number of rhythmic units, we'll have a corresponding numerical prefix for the meter. One for mono, two for di, tri, tetrameter, three, four, etc. So I've noticed that students sometimes struggle to identify which syllable the stress and unstress are supposed to land. And as a result, they can't decide on what the poem's scansion is. So part of this issue, I think, is with not knowing how to actually read the poem in a natural idiomatic way, which is perhaps a bigger issue for non-native English speakers. And then the other part is not really being familiar with the practice of scanning a poem with all the confusing terminology, right? And the confusion with rhythmic units and whatever. So recently, as part of my experimentation with AI tools for learning, I discovered two ways that students can use AI to address both these issues. So that with a greater awareness of how the poem is read aloud and what metrical scheme it follows, we can spend more of our time on the really important stuff, which is thinking about what creative meaning we can make out of the poet's use of meter and rhythm. So with that, let's explore what these AI tools are. So the first thing that I get students to do when they're studying a new poem is to read the text aloud, always, and to read it in a slightly affected way as well. So they feel the thrust of each syllable and the thrum of each line. I used to take for granted that this would be an easy task, but I've actually come to discover over the years that reading aloud poetic language has its own set of challenges. Some of the vocabulary might be unfamiliar, and often students forget to keep reading at the end of the line where there's no punctuation, i.e. in enchantment, which creates a totally different feeling from what the text syntax suggests. So to solve this problem, I think AI text-to-speech platforms could really help. And I recently stumbled upon this company called Eleven Labs, which is a deep learning company with a voice generator solution that converts text into natural sounding speech. I fed the Eleven Labs AI a couple of John Keats and Emily Dickinson poems, and it read them loud fluently, and to say the least, poetically as well. You can also specify which gender and which accent you want the poem to be read aloud in. And while it's not necessarily the case that hearing a Keats poem like Ode to the Nightingale read aloud in a British male voice would make for a better understanding of it than it were read in an American female voice, say, it's still helpful to recreate a voice that's probably much closer to the way it was originally conceived in the poet's head, which in Keats' case, yes, would be male and British. Equally, it could be interesting to flip it around, though, and have the AI read aloud 
a Keats poem in a female non-British voice to consider how this affects our impression and feel of the poem's messages. Does it change it? Does it not? We need to hear it to know. For instance, here's me asking the Eleven Labs voice generator to read Keats Ode to a Nightingale in a male voice. My heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my sense as though of hemlock I had drunk or emptied some dull opiate to the drains one minute past and Lethe wards had sunk. Pretty cool, right? So let's try a poem with a different emotional register, say for example, Sylvia Plath's Daddy, and see if the AI reads the text with emotionality too. You do not do, you do not do any more, black shoe in which I have lived like a foot for 30 years, poor and white, barely daring to breathe or a chew. Daddy, I have had to kill you. You died before I had time. I used to pray to recover you. Ach du. In the German tongue, in the Polish town scraped flat by the roller of wars, wars, wars. Pretty good, right? It's also really helpful that it pronounces those German words accurately because I'm willing to bet that not everyone studying this poem would know German. And being able to hear these words articulated in the right way is an important element in creating the poem's emotional impact. The same case goes for something like T.S. Eliot or other modernist poems, which tend to feature quite a lot of non-English allusions and expressions, such as, well, the Italian epitaph to Eliot's love song. For our students and even the teacher may not even speak Italian, so we'll probably not hear this Italian epitaph read aloud in full to feel how it fits in the context of the poem. Now, with AI text-to-speech tools like this Eleven Labs platform, students can hear entire poems read aloud idiomatically, which is going to help one develop a greater sense of the sonic and rhythmic aspect of poetry. A good analogy for this hearing-aided approach to reading poetry is actually studying a play by watching a theatrical production of it, which is, as we know, far better for a holistic understanding of drama than if a student were to just read the play script as a purely word-based literary construct. So at the start of this video, I said that the point of scansion isn't really in being able to throw out those fancy compound terms like trochaic tetrameter or spondaic hexameter or whatever, right? But in being able to feel the rhythmic flow and cadence of a poem and to consider what the pattern or shifts in rhythm might convey about the emotions and ideas in the work. And this means that the act of scanning shouldn't be the main focus of our poetry analysis, but it certainly helps to see how it's done and to know what the metrical arrangement of a poem is. And this is where we can leverage AI with large language models like GPT and DeepSeek having the capability of scanning syllable by syllable virtually any poem to show us where the natural stresses and unstresses should fall and what the overall rhythmic scheme of a poem is. For instance, I might ask Deep Seek to scan the meter and rhythm of Keats' Ode to a Nightingale. You'll see that the AI here has marked out each stress and unstressed syllable in each line and indicated what type of metrical or rhythmic unit it belongs to. Well, mostly as we see iambic pentameter. For those lines which diverge from the majority five foot pattern, it also specifies that it's a hexameter, a six foot line, or a trimeter, a three foot line, which gives us a clear idea of what an iamb and a meter might mean as these references correspond directly line by line to the AI's bolded and marked out words and syllables here. I also like that it explains how the poet might use rhythmic variations for effect, so that it's important that students take a flexible view towards scansion and not feel the need to shoehorn a poem into to an absolute fixed scheme or feel frustrated when they see any kind of divergence from, say, an iambic pentameter with an extra stress or a non-stress at the end of the line. So the AI statement that these variations emphasize certain motions or ideas might be vague, but it's probably better off being ambiguous, to be honest, because that's where we can come in with our own specific, creative, and unique interpretations of what such rhythmic variations could suggest about the speaker's emotional changes or what it suggests about the poem's broad a message. So for detailed ideas on this, you can of course watch my full analysis on Keats' Ode to a Nightingale right here. The bottom line is by using something like an LLM to show us in seconds the step-by-step -step process of scanning a poem, we're using AI to handle the more technical aspects of our poetry learning so that we can now have more mental and cognitive bandwidth to focus on delving into the nuances and possibilities of the text itself.
So what's the key takeaway from all of this then? Well, for starters, with text-to-speech AI tools like Eleven Labs, we can now hear exactly how a poem is read aloud clearly and idiomatically, which helps us develop a sharper, more accurate sense of the poem's soundscape for our analysis. Then with LLMs like DeepSeek and GPT, we can quickly identify the metrical arrangement of a poem with the right technical terminology and then get to work focusing on what really matters, which in my opinion is what the sound, flow, rhythm, and meter of the poem suggest to us about the themes and ideas. This makes a topic like Scansion much less intimidating and difficult to grapple with for students, which in turn opens up a wider avenue of interpretative possibilities for poetry learners. Many who previously may have found something like Scansion to be too challenging to tackle and therefore avoided it altogether at the expense of their analysis breadth and depth. And there you go, guys. These are the two ways I think you can use AI to enhance your poetry learning, specifically in hearing how a poem is read aloud and how to scan a poem for meter and rhythm. With these tools, perhaps we'll find scansion to be much less scary of a topic to approach. And with that, gain more confidence in incorporating meter and rhythm related points in our future poetry analysis. For more AI learning videos, you can check out this playlist right here. I also have an entire playlist of poetry study videos, as well as lots of detailed analysis videos on some of the best English poems ever written. All of those links are included in the description box below. Also, if you're interested in learning more about how to use AI to level up your studies, then please sign up for early access to what is going to be my Applied AI for Academic Studies course, and I'll reach out with more details very soon. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button below if you found this video helpful for you in any way, so that you can encourage me to keep making these useful English Lit Study videos for you. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that subscribe button below and hit that bell notification so that you never miss out on my future weekly study videos. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye!